All right, we're going to try something a little different today. I don't want to set up the camera for the regular studio shot, so we're going to take a little flying footage. So today, welcome back. Uh, I am a little bit slow on my general pace of a video or two a week. Uh, so I'm one every two weeks so far. That's probably how it's going to go at least up until the end of the first week in August. So we'll see as I fly down through the little park that I usually go to. Uh, I ran across an article called The Bicycle Thief. Uh, it is a New York Times article that was published on uh, July 12th. But first, right here in this video, uh, there's a crane that comes flying up out of here. It's almost dead center. And then it flies up to the left and then over to the right. There it goes. I didn't really expect to see it there today, but it was a beautiful day. It was hot out. And, uh, and it'll come back up over the trees on the right-hand side. There it is. It was pretty cool today. Pretty cool. I was trying to get up a little higher here in a second to try to follow it. And, um, but I didn't want to get too close or really attract too much of its attention. So uh, that was all the crane that I got. But anyway... So please enjoy the video, um, and I'm just going to talk about this Bicycle Thief article that hit the New York Times, because it was really annoying. Uh, somebody told, <laughs> it was as told to Mab Jones, who evidently is a blogger out of Tokyo. Um, so somebody told him, well, somebody, a woman who's credited as Sarah Lewis, 29, who lives in Kyoto and teaches English in Osaka, who is originally from London, um... My guess is that's not her actual name. If, it's, if she's smart, that's not her actual name because uh, she basically noticed that there were a bunch of bicycles down by a, one of the subway stations in Kyoto and probably near one of the schools would be my guess, but uh, Doshisha and Ritsumeikan are both up there. Kyoto University's right up in the heart of Kyoto, so there are all these schools and all these college kids and they have crappy bikes and they kind of leave them by the, the subway stations. Uh, and generally in a pile because the station people will come out and throw them out of the way of the sidewalk. So she was had her eye on a couple of these bikes, and um, so sometimes people take bicycles, new ones. Yes, bicycles get stolen, but you're not actually supposed to take a bicycle that's not yours, so don't do that. Uh, but so she was talking about how... Uh, they were abandoned and, you know, everything looks uh, like it's fine. And she asked somebody, one of her friends or something, and they said, oh, yeah, no, it's probably no problem. It's no problem. You just pick it up and use it and you leave it wherever you leave it and don't worry about it. It'll be OK. Now, it doesn't say whether the someone that told her that it was OK was Japanese or a foreigner. Um, so, yeah. Um, she talks a little bit about uh, gomi hunting. Uh, so there are certain days where large pieces of garbage, things that are too big to easily throw away or in the regular garbage, uh, are put out on the sidewalk. And that was the way I got my original television set. Somebody was throwing it out. But it has a sticker on it that says, we're throwing this out. And actually, people get really mad if you take the stuff that they've paid to have removed and uh, take it. Um, so I don't hear about people doing that too much, but my social group has kind of changed a little bit. It's not ALTs as much as it used to be. So if you're an ALT out there, do you still go out and do the gomi hunting? Uh, cause I got all kinds of furniture and like I said, my first TV and stuff like that was all, uh, out of the garbage basically. And it works great, but with recycle shops now, it's not that important to do it. So anyway, she was riding around on her <laughs> acquired bicycle, we'll say that, and uh, she came back to her bicycle one day and the original owner had figured out that that was his bicycle and was waiting for her and called the cops and so she went down to the police station and basically was grilled and they let her go for some reason. Uh, and so that's why I'm pretty sure that it's probably a pseudonym rather than an actual name because if her school found out that she was arrested by the police for stealing a bicycle, chances are 
she's not going to have a job anymore. And my guess is somebody's going to be spiteful and start to uh, dig through and see if they can figure out who this person is. Um, so I do hope for her own sake or his own sake, probably, that it is not a actual person named Sarah Lewis, but somebody else who's not from England if they're smart, but not the actual person's name. Uh, one, one note about the video here while we have it. Uh, this is a landfill that they've turned into a park. Uh, the other part that I usually shoot at is the river down there that we first walked up. But this is all just a big hill and uh, I don't see any of the methane pipes that you usually see in traditional landfills. So I'm not entirely positive about it, but the way this hill looks, it looks like a traditional landfill uh, reclaimed park. Um, I, it's been two months since I've flown, so I wanted to just kind of get out. And you can see in that tree there, and all the trees, this is sped up footage about eight times. But you can see how windy it was today. I was a little, I was terrified uh, of losing control of it. And so not terribly exciting shots in today's video, but, um, but I wanted to get out and get it up off the ground again. Because I got a second battery, it's pretty awesome. And I kind of wanted to do a flyover of this little playground thing. And I didn't like the first one, so I sped it back up and then tried it again. And I kind of wanted to do a slider shot. You know, you get up there and you kind of scoop past it sideways. But the wind was just messing with me all day. And so I really didn't want to smack into it because I didn't want to break the props on the, on the drone and all of that. So there's a lot of sped up footage in here because it was about 23 minutes. I've managed to cut it down to a little less than 10, which is not so bad. But yeah, it was fun. It was a nice day, but it was really hot. It was almost 38, 36, 38 degrees out in the park today about the time that I went and did this. So it'll be probably mornings only from now on, which is a little rough, but meh. And if you turn right here, you will see the vending corner. Yay. So all through the park, they have uh, places to wash your hands there on the left and uh, vending machines for sodas and stuff. And the bathrooms and stuff are way farther to the left. You can see the big power towers. Um, pylon, I don't know what they're called. Pylons, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, anyway, they're all through the park. And so there's like high voltage wires running overhead. I was a little worried that flying this close to that much high power stuff was going to screw around with the remote control or screw around with the compass. So there were no chancing stuff. Ooh, look, dust. There was no chancing anything risky flying today. I kept it pretty close to the ground the whole time. So no amazing shots, but the sky was nice and blue. And uh, this is a little dog park run and uh, the parking lot that I, hey, there I am. <laughs> the parking lot is that I'm parked in is down at the other end. Uh, and so basically I just wanted to run the batteries down to give it a chance to kind of exercise a little bit and kind of make sure that I could still control it when it needed to be controlled. But the wind was a little bit of a surprise. It was kind of pain. But the footage is still fairly stable. You can see in the trees over there on the right how hard the wind is blowing. And it caused a little bit of control issues. Everything wasn't quite as smooth as I would have liked it, but it was good enough and uh, fairly decent. It was a nice day to get out, but it was hot. So this Bicycle Thief article was really annoying because the person was stupid uh, and don't take stuff that's not yours uh, unless somebody gives it to you or there's a tag on it that says free and if you can't read it, then it doesn't say free for you, then does it? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, pulling stuff out of garbage or at least there used to be, but I don't see it so much anymore. Uh, and the recycle shops are pretty cheap and they'll deliver for you so you don't have to carry that crap home. So it's not a bad way to go, but if any ALTs out there are still hunting through the garbage, please let me know because I'm curious to see if that still happens. All right, I will talk to you all later. Bye.